Caesar. The destroyer of the Roman Republic, stabbed 23 times, the guy other guys compare themselves to when they want to look tough. Yeah, okay, we get it. He did some stuff, but he was only one third of a triumvirate, and you know who else was doing stuff at the end of the Republic? Pompey, thrower of parties, marrier of daughters, general of everywhere Caesar wasn't, and overachiever extraordinaire. Roll the intro. Sorry, Crassus, maybe another time. Be seeing you, buddy. Right, Pompey, I'm not 100% sure that isn't a bust of Mel Brooks. Uh, Pompey isn't exactly a rags to riches, sweat of his brow kind of guy. His father was a second class citizen who served as a consul with a reputation for greed and ruthlessness and double crossing, a lot like Pompey, actually. Yeah, second class sounds modest until you realize Rome had quite a few classes. You see, at the end of the Republic, Rome was not looking so hot. Violence had become an essential element of politics decades before. Rome was fighting war after war with Greece and Italy and itself. Marius and Sulla were doing the whole two great men duke it out thing before it was cool. Pompeius Sr. actually died in the siege of Rome, and Pompey got held accountable for his dad maybe stealing some public property, standard politician stuff. But darned if Pompey didn't know how to make the best of a bad situation. The judge found him so charming that he didn't just let him off the hook, he straight up gave him his daughter. Now this was all well and good for Pompey, but then Marius and Sulla started another civil war, and Pompey took three leads and marched on Rome from the north while Sulla came in from the south, and Sulla was so thrilled he gave him his stepdaughter and the title Pompey the Great. To be fair though, it's a lot easier to be known as the Great with a name like Pompey. And it's not too long before Pompey's true colors begin to show. While Sulla was basking in the glory of the dictatorship and setting dangerous precedents, Pompey was sent to chase the last of the Marians to the ends of the earth. The ends of the Roman earth, at least, meaning he ran them out of Sicily and then squashed the rebellion in northern Africa. But the turnaround time was pretty remarkable. Pompey certainly thought so, so he went to ask Sulla, Hey, can I throw a triumph? You did good, kid, but we only do that kind of thing for consuls and praetors. Come on, I'm hot stuff, you're old news, what are you gonna do, kill me? Well, no, but- Alright, throwing a triumph. Pompey! So Pompey rode into Rome on a chariot driven by elephants. That couldn't fit through the city gate, so he tried to- awkwardly switched to horses, presumably while everybody was watching. He continued to push Sulla's buttons until the day he died. Needless to say, he was not mentioned in the will. The next 18 years were more of the same. Pompey fought a war in Spain, got another triumph, became consul at the age of 35, even though he'd never held public office and was still illegally young, fought a war against pirates, fought a war in the Black Sea, conquered Syria, turned Judea into a client kingdom, which would never come back to bite the Romans. Hell, he liberated some city-states in Palestine so hard that they restructured their calendars to start at 0 PE, Pompey. An era, and they kept them that way for six or seven hundred years, even though Jesus was right next door. So basically, I could make videos about Pompey for the rest of the year, and we'd still never get to the triumvirate. But that's the climax of the story, so we're just gonna skip the first few acts. So after Pompey returned to Rome, and wait for it, threw himself the biggest, most elaborate triumph Rome had ever seen to celebrate his 45th birthday, he and Caesar noticed something. They were both powerful men who wanted to be more powerful men. With Pompey's popularity and Caesar's cunning, there was nothing to stop them, so they formed an alliance, and then Caesar added Crassus to the group because he was more or less the richest man to have ever lived. Absolute rulers aside, everything was great. Caesar got a turn as consul, Pompey and Crassus got turns as consuls, Pompey even got Caesar's daughter Julia to be his next trophy wife, but he started to notice something. Caesar was getting awfully popular after conquering Gaul and he was definitely sporting a bigger army after Pompey lent him a legion or two. And then Julia died, so Caesar wasn't Pompey's father-in-law anymore. Oh, don't worry, he found a new 20-year-old to marry. Suddenly, Caesar lost the election for consul to two of his arch nemeses. People are trying to disarm Pompey and Caesar, but you've got to get both of them to do it at the same time, or else the other one's going to take absolute power, but they're both armed, and Pompey's army is right here in the city. Maybe Pompey should be the only consul, and what do you mean Caesar's crossed the Rubicon already? So here's the deal. Pompey gets out of there because things are going from 0 to 100 real fast. He can't go to Spain, so he goes to Greece and takes the Senate with him because he's basically in charge of the whole East. He gives Bibulus, former consul and governor of Syria, a fleet with which to guard the Adriatic Sea while he collects himself and gathers soldiers and taxes. But Bibulus figures that it's winter and nobody's gonna go sailing in winter, especially not the Romans. Their most brilliant naval strategy is to just ram the other guy's ship and fight like they're on land. It'll be fine! So he docks his ships far away and Caesar gets half his ships across before Bibulus has time to react and come on! Bibulus, you had one job! <sighs> oh well. At least this will be exciting to watch, because the stage has been set for the clash between the two greatest generals of the age. Like watching a couple of superheroes who used to be good friends become driven to fight each other due to- Oh, wait a minute, I've made that reference before! But Pompey's got the numbers. He's got the supplies, he's got the home field advantage, and he's got Caesar right where he wants him. But Caesar's got Caesar. And then this happens. <laughs>
Thus, Pompey finds himself in the shoes of those last Marians all those years ago, being chased to the ends of the earth. In this case meaning Egypt, where he was betrayed and stabbed to death like a certain other triumvir I know of. Caesar arrived two days later and said, Jesus, dude, I wanted him to surrender, not kill him. What is wrong with you? But he really hit it off with Cleopatra, so I guess all's well that ends well. So you might say Pompey was a bit of a pompous fellow, in fact that's not where the word comes from, it just sounds similar. A big thank you to everyone who helped me cross 100 subscribers, and if you want to be notified as soon as I release my next video then hop on board and help me shoot for two. If you like this video consider sharing with your friends, or just carrying on the conversation in the comments. You know the spiel. See you next time.